basic one, but we're going to go ahead and load on into the Rift. It's going to be our first game of week two. Day one, Ruel taking on GHS. So looking at a quick glance at some of the, the builds coming in, especially in over into the mid lane, Inspiration Tree coming in for Castan and LeBlanc, we should expect to see a kind of double Dark Seal build, build coming in from both sides, which would kind of indicate a slower pace mid, uh, slower pace early to mid game, which is a little bit reflective of some regions like the LCK where they like to go for the slower mid play. But that doesn't exactly fit the play style of the Philippines. So we might just see them dodge that entirely. I would like to see them go for the safer play, but they might dodge that and go for a more damage centric build, try and rush for the core components early on. Oh, homie. Outside. Gonna come in. Oh, got it. Oh, oh no! He missed the top. He did get the second one at least. <laughs> Going for the quick trade back here, but in the end, it does go on over to homie. Still, <laughs> both just giving each other love taps. You're saying, "Hey, bud, welcome to lane. Welcome to week two. Let's have some fun." It's like a playful nudge. The playful nudge. Like yeah. you mentioned, also with the inspiration tree, mm -hmm. this is likely going to be the last day that we see Minion D Materializer be as popular. Mm -hmm. It is getting some adjustments. It's only going to have three charges coming into our next patch. On top of that, too, it does get you a little bit more bonus damage. So I'm interested to see if players are going to still pick it up. Um, cause when you look at Inspiration, you have the Minion Dematerializer in that, in that uh, set there. I'm not too sure exactly what else you would take. Yeah, I feel like it's a very, it's a very different kind of pickup depending on the type of role that you're playing. Minion Dematerializer over in the top lane, the mid lane, is generally just used for clear. Whereas in the support position, it's still used to try and secure that cannon minion when you absolutely need to. Mm -hmm. So that in the support rock is still see being useful because you want to pick up those secured cannons while you're in the laning phase. And it's not as useful once you hit the mid game. Well, draw though on this one opted to go in for the stopwatch instead. Oh yeah, so that's interesting. Early taunt though, and that's an instant cleanse Whoa. coming out. That's the, that's the threat of this early power from this shit and does lose out on a bit of the health but they do have that relic shield to be able to get back some health onto that shen so vaughn and sap playing hyper aggressive to start things off with an early taunt i don't think there was a threat of a kill there lucian really jumped the gun to that cleanse you just i mean i guess it makes sense you don't need it that you know just get use it out get it out of the way we can have it refresh but still that's a very decisive use of the cleanse coming out Maybe he was hoping to possibly try and turn it with a quick uh, piercing light. Maybe try and they kill Vaughn right away. They do yeah. have ignite on both supports, so there is a little bit of kill thresher mm -hmm. uh, when Vaughn gets pretty low. So homie getting some decent amount of damage here onto this Aatrox and gets the grass as well. Nice job. Yeah, big difference up in the top lane. The Aatrox opted for the domination tree, went for the inspiration tree second. Uh, that means that he's not as tanky as Akali, but down the bot side, but again, coming out. Oh, Sap, the play is going to land there. They go for the taunt onto the Jarvan, but they're going to still keep on going. Knock up, though, lands beautifully done with the flash on forward. Also coming out from Kyle, and that's going to be first blood onto the bot lane. Good pathing coming in. This is what we were talking about. We expected the pressure to be down the bot side by J now. Jinjiao, top side. Gonna try and go for it to get back into the Twilight Shroud on the side of home. He's gonna wait this one out as long as possible. Does have the flash available. Does not have the alt though. And is looking to just waste time, it would seem. That's gonna be a trade back going on to Ian. One for one kill coming in. I'm not sure how much I like the fact that the Sinjiao got such a free gank, considering they should have knowledge that the, the Sinjiao isn't bot side if he didn't make that counter gank. So still playing a hyper aggressive. They need to work a little bit on this communication part, but good first blood coming in for GHS. Means that they are able to find this advantage down the bot lane where it counts. Up of that too, they ended up giving the kill on over to the Zin Zhao. So Ian, especially now, has to be making impacts in lanes because that gold now going onto the jungler instead of that Aatrox possibly to try and win that match. Oh my more. goodness, round two. He's coming back for more. Homie though, just gonna go down toward the side of that tri-brush, uses the shroud right away. Able to get back to safety, so able to escape that one. It was a little, a little too early to show on the side that it's in Zhao. You can still see though, deciding not to go back and not having to burn a teleport on the side of this Aatrox. He's mm -hmm. going to stay back in lane, trying to soak up some CS. He's going to be down a little bit in the health department. Yeah, I mean, you talked about how Ian is going to be that key player coming in for Real, and they have to use him to their best abilities to try and set things up. <laughs> Meanwhile, coming into the mid lane is a Thresh. Uh, draws thinking about it. 
Not spotted up on any coverage. That's going to be the Ignite and the Root's going to land. Flay's going to bring him on back. They need to finish him off, though. Final auto attack will land, and Aaron will be able to secure a kill. So nice roam coming out from the support. Great room coming in. I'm loving the way that GHS are playing out this early game. You get the Lucian ahead. The wave is now shoving in. So the just as the Thresh comes back in, they'll have this big wave and they can respond to this. As long as they don't let Rial take anything more while they follow this wave, they have a great time. Go ahead and back on the side of Sap and Vaughn. Have a little bit extra gold in their pockets. Should have enough for a vamp. Pick that one up. We do have... Jarvan making his way up towards this top lane. Crocs isn't pushed too far forward. Is going to put down a ward into the tri brush, so good timing there. Is also going to see the Proro, so going to assume someone's nearby. Is going to be able to avoid the knockup from the flag drag with the quick little dash. Gets a quick knockup and they go their separate ways. Mm hmm. A bit of a skirmish up top side, but we're not expecting to see too much action from them just yet. A little bit of wasted time coming in from the Jarvan. I felt like he could have been setting up for a little bit more, especially now that his cans are all down. He can go try and set up for a little bit more control down the bot side where a lot of the fighting is expected to happen. Kastin and Sin Zhao looking for a roam down over to the bot side river. Yeah, option go for the scuttle. We do see that flash on forward. A nice lantern to get it back to safety. Kyle does have to burn the cleanse, did have it back up in time, so nicely done. Meanwhile, up in top lane, though, the flawless execution already going to be used here by homie. That's going to force out the ultimate from the Aatrox. Gets back on over to safety, but they just keep on dashing in. You can't get away from Akali that easily. Flashing back on forward, though, nicely done. Flash is available, goes on forward, finds the kill on top. Homie just sticks onto this Aatrox like white on bread. Just no way to escape from this. And this is what's going to happen as the Akali tries to scale up. Aatrox had the undisputed item advantage there. Had the serrated third coming in. But the Akali still outdamaged him at this phase of the game. So it's a little bit indicative of what we can expect to see for the next five to six minutes or so up until Aatrox is able to find real completed items. Let's take another look here. Right when that level six is hit on both sides, they both go in for the fight. But that chip damage just allows that, perf uh, that flawless execution to just do so much. It's great setup coming in from... VHS to find this solo kill, and that's not something you want to see happen. Both signs burn flash off of this, but Aatrox should be able to teleport back if he needs to try and catch this wave, but otherwise, just walking back in still has the teleport advantage. Well, that's a bit concerning, though, on the side of uh, Horu. Because now you're losing out on that lane, especially when you have the early aggression coming out from your jungle down bot lane. Vaughn is going to get ignited here. Flash on forward with the Flay. That's going to secure the kill. They try and answer back, though. Kill goes on back to Sap as they're able to trade back with a Ren in mid lane. There's two love blocks. They're going to go ahead and find the root. Needs to finish off the kill, though. Oh! oh! Ritwok gets back to safety, but it won't be enough. The Ignite's ticking. He's going to survive. What an absolute clutch play Woo! over the mid lane. That's the difference between two Dark Seals and one. Oh, that hurts. Man, Aaron felt very confident. I'm shocked, but... Oh, that was weird. That was... Oh, so we're going in top lane. Once again, the Akali's got the flawless execution and is just going to rip apart this Aatrox. Game now split up in a few different ways. We talked about how the Akali going into the top lane might be a little bit of an issue for the Aatrox, but should still be possible for the Aatrox to play it out. Aatrox currently not playing to the fullest of his potential, solo dying multiple times up in the top lane. That's going to end up hurting this team because now the Sin Zhao has to invest resources up to the top side. He's going to go for a quick trade once again. Oh, he's thinking about Oh, he goes in! Oh, no, it's the That's Lee Sin! Green. It's the Lee Sin Syndrome! Gets back to safety in the shroud, but... Oh, that was gutsy. I don't know if that was greed. I think that was style. Let's take a look <laughs> at that fight in the mid lane. Goes in, gets a silence, gets a decent amount of damage. Iron's really playing aggressive here, considering he only had half the health. Yeah, just Sigil of Malice sets things up for the fight, but it doesn't look like... All right, so here we go. So they get the chain off and looking for this fight. The Eighth Knife from the casting comes out first. And this just jumps back to where we were looking at before. And wow, this was a... This was a heck of a fight. He he was a, oh. he was afraid to go in for the auto attack because he was afraid of the he was afraid of the the silence coming in from the castle, the Q coming from the castle. But he still end up, ends up dying to it anyway. So, in hindsight, it would have been better to go for the auto attack. But you know, it's hard to tell at that point. We'll see here, and that's again another solo win for this castle in the mid lane. Both 
Midlander's now one to one. Let's see oh, no. though. Oh no, now the Jarvins come to play. They get the knockup. Stan United though. Shen wants to try and turn around the fight. They're not able to get back toward the Jarvin though. The Cataclysm keeps them contained. Now coming on over. The taunt's gonna land. And now the Akali, the flawless execution, tries to go for the kills. It's not gonna happen though. And the shutdown goes on to Ian. No Ignite available on the Akali means that the Aatrox will survive off of this one. And a lot of Tower Plague's gonna be picked up now. Nicely done, so that's going to get some gold back into Ral's pocket. They were down about 1,500 gold early on in the game, but they've been slowly chipping back here, even with these lost fights here and there. That should be enough. Meanwhile, Balling, though, they'll do the exact same with the Shen now, not having any pressure. Balling isn't able to get as much of an advantage as they would like here, so the Shen will be able to get back in quite quickly, whereas Topside has now... The advantage to pick up looks like two tower platings, three tower platings up Topside. Yeah, it's down to one now, so they only have one more to take. Ah, there we go. Yeah, so they managed to get quite a bit of money. It is split a little bit with the Shen, but it won't be too bad. Shen gets a couple of his critical items early on. Doesn't really hurt Oh, Sap. Tried to put down the Ghost, and it gets spooked instead. Tried to go in as well. They had a control ward, and that's just a bit of a misplay coming out from the bot lane. Perhaps I haven't talked about this cleanse on the Lucian. This is a great pickup coming in. The amount of value that Lucian, that Kyle has seen from this cleanse, is absolutely massive. It's massive. We've yet to see the combo, though, with the ultimates coming out from Sap. So now it does have the That's Fates true. Call. He can only cleanse one of the CC, so he's going to have to wait until the very end of that CC chain to escape. Take a look here at that gold total, too. Now with two kills and the one assist onto that Lucian, has a 550 gold bounty. Aaron's still going aggressive. Vaughn's looking for a rotation, though. No vision there. Aaron figures something's up. Val's just going to jump in. I think he could go for this on his own, to be honest. Aaron does have the distortion back available. They're going to keep on chasing. Draw, though, going to come over as well. Has the lantern available. They use that blast going in. Hey, Val, he comes around the corner. He realizes, oh, no, I've been jinxed. They come back. They go to get that flay. And now the Cataclysm secures that kill. Do they trade back, though? Zin Zhao now jumps back into the fight. Aaron wants to come on over. Gets a huge chunk of damage, but it just isn't enough. Stopwatch will delay the inevitable, though. They finally do pick up the kill. But down in bot lane, though, a 1v1 goes in favor of the Lucian. Bell has to be asking at this point, what is this Thresh doing mid lane all the time? Why, why, is, he, why is he at red buff? <laughs> he walks over, gets the gank into the mid lane in the first, using the flay, gets the kill onto the cast in the first round. Now goes back and gets another kill. And here we have the bot lane. This is exactly what needs to oh. not happen. Oh my goodness, he jumps the wrong direction. Kalissa jumps the wrong direction with the passive and ends up dying there. Absolutely that's massive. That's the strength though when it comes to Lucian. When you're at Callista versus Lucian, like Callista wants longer fights so she can build up her Ren stacks, but Lucian wants those quick trades and can easily go for an all in, especially with press the attack up at top lane. Homie trying to get aggressive here. Nice knockup's gonna come on through. Flawless execution gets that stun on back. Needs to just burst him down though. Is able to find the first kill, but needs to take him down one last time. Goes in underneath the turret and is able to escape. Beautiful play Woo! coming in for the Zakali. Look at these plays. Look at the moves. So fancy. Jumping in, in and out, in and out. Just being able to use these timings so very well and get the kill onto the Aatrox. 0 oh, 3 now. I want to be a little bit critical about the Callista build. All right. Magical footwear on the Callista means that she took the inspiration tree. The, the, the greed that you have to try and set up on Kalista to go for the Magical Footwear, yes, it's a 600 gold value, but arguably, you should be rushing the Berserker Grease on Kalista first. I think you want to get the full passive stacks out, don't you? You want to get the, make full use of the passive, don't you? So you're going for the Magical Footwear delayed the use of the passive and removed the power of a potential secondary, three, uh, secondary tree. So... I'm a little bit critical of how the Kalissa has opted to go into game. Not just the way she's played in the game, but just the way, the, just the kind of top process that she went into the game. It's a very greedy strategy, and it doesn't look like it's paying off. And you're also going for the enhanced auto with your main key, so fortunately we'll have to see another hook's going to land. Look at that damage that comes through onto Sap. He's forced to back off, but the rest of the team is trying to answer. Zin Zhao wants to join in onto the flight. Aaron, though, comes in for the assassination underneath the tower and is able to finish off the Kalista. Rotating down into the bot lane. LeBlanc gets another kill. Kassin trying to come in, but it's a little bit late to this fight. There's some low health bars, though. 
And they used a lot. They're going to try and do what they can. Go fully underneath that tower. Stan United's also going to come on through. Turns it back into a 3v3. Cleanse blown, but it wasn't even needed. And now the Aatrox has actually teleported down. Aaron needs to get to safety. Doesn't have any mana, though. And they're going to get just destroyed. 500 bounty onto that Cassidy. And meanwhile, up in top lane, the Rift Herald was used. Kyle's trying to kite back. Is going to get back home to safety. The first tower, though, it goes in favor. And the second to GHS. And on top of that, they have this Rift Herald. They're not slowing down. Sure, Royal, you're going to get yourself the Moundrake, but you might lose out on your second tier tower on top. Real have are sticking true to the 100% first Dragon Raid, but I'm not sure how much value they're finding out of it. As the top lane gets destroyed, oh. as the bot lane gets destroyed, I think you'll be able to get this turret. I, I, I guess the wind will blow that turret over. Yeah. It's down to about probably 10 health. You, they do you don't even need any minions. You just walk up, hit it once, it's gone. Let's give it a quick tap. <laughs> Oh, Sap, you're not thinking about oh, this. No. Flawless execution. Cataclysm, too. And they just eviscerate Sap. Rest of the team, though, wants to try and respond here for a possible counter. They have three members casting over the wall. The taunt's going to land. Able to get back home to safety. Draw goes on in. His team just have so much mobility in their kits. Between oh. the dashes, and then you have a Thresh Lantern, too. It's really hard to catch out GHS. <laughs> Absolutely. The mobility is proving to be such a difficult situation coming in for Riau to deal with. Whereas on GHS side, not only do they have insane amounts of... Ah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> not only do they have insane amounts of mobility, currently Riau is misplaying a lot of their matchups. They shouldn't be losing as hard as they are. The casting into the mid lane, you know, was a matchup that was like, okay, it's supposed to be casting in favor. Casting can poke out the LeBlanc as long as the Jarvan doesn't copy for the gank. But then Thresh just oh, comes in instead. Geez. Ian gets back to safety. Won't have that flash though for the next time. And Aaron's just going to keep hunting in the jungle. It's not, it's not that it's in Zhao's jungle anymore. No. It's the side of GHS, because now once they knock down this first tier tower in mid lane, the mid section of the map just opens up, and they can exert pressure down into Ruel's jungles. Now going to go ahead and clear out the minions, but that's going to be four towers now going on over to GHS. A little bit of an open window in time right now. As GHS don't have all that much they have to do. A lot of the waves and a lot of the turrets that are more easily picked up have already been obtained by GHS, so they can find this time to make a quick recall. I want to see them play a little bit better right now. Play better than they have been. Recall at the same time, get the same backing windows, and then move in as a unit. Over oh, the mid lane, though, Aaron might get cut out. He's going to get silenced there. Does distort back, though, to safety, but the rest of the team is going for some plays in the jungle. It's a 3v4 now. Make it a 5v2. They try and get home to safety, homie. Try and jump on over. Going to get taunt, though. Mid-dash. Beautifully done by the Shen. Another shutdown goes on to the Zin Zhao. Seriously questioning the top process behind that play. So I was saying they should go back, recall together, and then push out as a five-man unit, especially when they don't have that much they need to do. They decide that they would rather go for a fight in the enemy jungle, end up dying off, and the way that they're kind of building right now is very greedy. Oh, but look at this. They just keep setting up. They get one bad play, and then they make one good play. <laughs> and it's all this aggression into the jungle. Still, though, that's a 6,000 gold lead for GHS. We got Baron joining us in about 90 seconds. A second dragon will also be coming on through. 9 to 13, the kills. Now they're going to go ahead, back off, spend some of that money that's been probably sitting on Kyle. He's going to likely go ahead and finish off that Black Cleaver. At this point, I would like to see them recall together. The Lucian recalling at that time is pretty awkward because now as they try and set up the waves top side and bot side, they won't have a wave they can push into the mid lane. Dragon and Baron spawning up in about a minute and a minute and a half. Good opportunity for them to go look for some neutral objectives, a couple of picks, and they should be keeping track of enemy jungle camp timers. Because right now, Ian has nothing to farm. So it's very easy for them to recall, come back, clear the jungle camps again, and then just wait for the neutral objectives and you deprive Ruyao of anything to pick up. On top of this too, for Sap, because they've now had to group so early into the game, it's 19 minutes. He doesn't have finished Berserker Greaves. He doesn't even have a recurve bow or zeal going in toward his attack speed item on the Runans, likely. Down volley. Hey, Aaron, a little too aggressive. 
Homie going to be able to get back with the dash from the Flawless Execution. We'll get back to safety. We're coming back to it. Of course, this Callista still feels like half a champion. You don't yeah. have the mobility. You don't have the upgraded boots just yet. And you don't have the attack speed. I absolutely agree with you, Opal. The, the, the game is very one-sided now because of this huge gap between champion power. Right. Uh, let's take a quick look at his bot lane ah. play again. Yeah, just jumps back in, and you just have the, the casting the Sinjiao in position. Ooh, three-man cataclysm, though. Stopwatch is going to be there. Draw was going to try and hook on back underneath the tower. They're able to keep them alive for so long. And now Kyle going on forward. Cleanse is going to get rid of the taunt. Now a flash play from Draw. Double kill onto the Akali. And now the side of GHS just looked to clean up house. And somehow the Jarvan survives. So you keep... One bad play, one good play. They, everything balances out. This is the universe coming back into balance. GHS find themselves a great fight. Now they're moving on to this Baron. Ooh, that's a decent little bit of damage from the Baron. The Jarvan going to go on. Try and get a little bit of regen back from the Scuttle. Meanwhile, let's take a look again toward that fight. That start of the three-man cataclysm. Oh, yeah. Just moving in. Jarvan made a great play. Lucian, again, pushing out the top side by himself. That's a little bit awkward. But they still managed to find a great initiation to this fight. The Akali tries to dish off some damage, so they try to keep themselves alive for a little bit longer. But they're so far behind, they don't have the damage. And when you talk about this half of a champion that Kalista is, look at this. Kalista is free hitting onto Lucian, finds barely 300 damage onto the squishiest target on the enemy team, has no additional mobility from the tier 2 boots to try and kite away from the Thresh, ends up dying so quickly. And that really just goes back to this problem where you pick, try and pick Kalista but you don't have any of that power. Uh, and this is why you don't ban the trifecta, the support trifecta for Kalista by, by yourself. You know what? But this is... So right now, Ruyao, had, they still have a way back into this game, and that is to abuse GHS's lacking uh, recall window. GHS don't recall as a unit. They move in a, in a fashion that is staggered. So there is a chance for them to find picks to get back into the game, Whereas G on GHS side, it's a lot more obvious. They have the power, they have the strength to just go in, siege up the ways right now, go bot, go mid, set somebody up top, and just end off the game. But ah, not a whole lot you can do <coughs> to draw. It's a little caught out, separated from the team. Ruel punished to get rid of one Baron. What? What even? Why? What, what is Aaron doing? They're what? just all trying to make these quick little cheeky plays and it might it just almost keeps backfiring them sometimes it does exactly you know it's it's a play that's like this can't work can it and then when it does work you're like wow it works that's incredible wow we're so good at league of legends but all then when sudden, it doesn't work you're like oh i'm so bad at league of legends <laughs> bond goes for an aggressive play they're calling those gonna try and get him down it's gonna find its target kyle is now dominating they still have that one cannon minion in the mid lane. They're going to continue pushing and up in top lane now. The inhibitor going to be exposed on the side of Ruel. They need to turtle, but just the amount of influence that they have to deal with here on the side of GHF. They have a 10,000 gold lead. They're pounding away on an inhibitor tower here. The inhibitor's now exposed in top. It's not looking good. Akali has such an easy opportunity right now, and there's no way for Ruel to jump back into the fight. They've lost the Shen, and that's going to be a huge amount of CC they've just lost. Two inhibitors going to be dropped over in the mid lane, over up uh, in the top lane as well. Ooh, I've seen that one before, Aaron. <laughs> You're giving me some flashbacks. Pops that blast going. Luckily, the team ain't on, on top some of it. Some heavy PSD starts coming in. Ah. PSD. Oh, no. <laughs> Mam Esports. Let's see here, though. They're going to go ahead and clean up the rest of these standing towers. Ruel have yet to get a single tower in the game. They almost got top early on. That wasn't able to turn into anything, though, because the Akali started to get ahead. Now Ruel has to make their decision. Do you try and make your final stand here at this choke point, or do you give up all three inhibitors? At which point, you're pretty much just calling this game a wash. They jump in. The Cataclysm finds its mark onto the Xin Zhao and the Callista. Callista is able to get back to safety. They get rid of the Jarvan. But how far is the team behind? Because Aaron and Kyle are still dishing out so much damage. Flawless execution goes into the backside. Not able to find the kill. It's a two for one. Ruel, they're able to hold. A very forced engage coming in from GHS there. 
they didn't have to go in for that fight. They just needed to wait for 10 more seconds for this initial wave into the mid lane to start pushing in. Once they have the super minions taking down the Nexus turrets, the, the, the attention from Riel is split up into multiple fronts, and it's an easy fight for GHS if they want to take one. A little bit of a misplay, but triple inhibitor picked up for the red team right now sets them up in a very good position. 13 to 18, a 9,000 gold lead. Kyle's just gonna back off, pick up the last of the gold that's standing on the map. Go ahead and buy some items, like take a look again at this last fight. Nice little start to get on top of that Callista, but the flash is available. Yeah, just looking at the way that the fight went off, the, the Jarvan doesn't have the tankiness that they kind of expect. Honestly, the only reason the fight panned out as well as it did is because the Akali is just so ridiculously ahead right now. Kalista managed to pick up two kills off of that fight, but honestly, at this point, I don't expect those two kills to put Kalista back in the game just yet. If they turn it off for long enough, just hold on to uh, farming up these super minion waves, they might be able to actually jump back into the game. But with the way things are right now, it's probably just going to be within GHS's favor, and they can just apply pressure and force and close out the game. See here, Kyle's actually picked up the Spear of Sojin as well. Seen that item make its way in just a couple of the 80 carry builds. That's actually a very tanky Lucian because you get health from Black Cleaver, you get health from the Spear of Sojin. Might not matter though because they're looking to finish off this game. Cataclysm finds itself four members in the thick of the fight. The Akali goes on back with a flawless execution and LeBlanc rejoins. Gets a massive damage onto the back line. That's going to be a double kill. Make it a triple and Aaron is unstoppable with the Quadra to finish this one off. Are they going to go ahead and dive for the Penta? It goes on over. Oh no though. It won't happen. Kyle goes into the stopwatch. He takes it home the last kill and the minions are crashing onto the Nexus. GHS able to take home the victory. Finding themselves a 26 and a half minute game. GHS have ruined Ruyao's hopes of finding that 3-0 yeah. today uh, and trying to get Lee have to go that have a 0-3 for themselves. But yeah, that means that we basically see GHS push themselves up the ladder a little bit and Ruyao have been dropped from the running. Yeah, they're no longer in contention to leave Group A. The best score they could now possibly have would be 2-4 and four because Liab already has 3 wins. It's actually impossible for them to actually overtake Liab in the standing. So, unfortunately for Ruel, they are still going to play out. They can play spoiler, though, to Liab, too. That is a possibility. Oh. <laughs> they now get to be in this group. They get to mess with people. That's their yeah. objective here. So you go in and it's like, well, since I don't have anything to lose at this point, why not just pick, like, my most, like... Let's just pick some, play some pocket picks, Absolutely. see how it goes, but... Nicely done there by GHS. Again, criticism, though, has to be for the mixed bag of plays. There's Absolutely. really good invades. Then there's some really bad dives. Then there's, like, bad invades. And then there's some good dives. It's 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 always one good thing, one bad thing. And then yeah. it balanced out where they were still able to take home the victory. The, the net win from each good thing was just overall more than the net loss from each bad thing. When they get a good thing, it's like three or four kills, or one or two turrets. When they have a bad thing, it's like one or two deaths. And it's like, you know, it, everything pans out pretty well. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of the highlights from that game. Of course, nice start here with a triple cataclysm to start off the fight. Again, it was good though, too. You did see a little bit of response there coming out. They were trying their best, but... Sap was just so far ahead, and you even mentioned this during the game, was doing barely any damage to Kyle. That fight started out as, honestly, an incredible Cataclysm. I feel like he, they weren't ahead to the point where if that Cataclysm didn't happen, they could have won that fight. I think oh, that probably. If, yeah, if the Cataclysm didn't if the, happen... If the Cataclysm only got one person, they likely would have won that fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that would have likely ended up happening. Still, they were still pretty strong. Right, so honestly, at that point, a lot of the plays that they were making turned out to be flashy, but I don't feel like they were necessary at all. So if you're looking <laughs> at GHS now, Brandon, well, yeah. who, who would your MVP be, on, in your opinion, off that? All right, if we're looking at Thresh. Looking at Thresh? I'm looking at Thresh. You like the pl uh, the Rome play in the I'm mid looking... lane early on really helped Aaron. Yeah, that's Sep, right? Yeah. yeah, so I'm looking at Sep. Sep, to me, we uh, look... that Sep is Kalista. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Sep is Kalista. Draw, uh, draw. Yeah, D R A uh, four W. 
Yeah, so uh, if we're looking at GHS, yeah, sorry, my thing's a little bit <laughs> if we're Our papers at, are weird. If we're looking at threat, I'm looking at Thresh, I'm looking at the way that he managed to set up those roams coming on the early game because I talked about how Jarvan was supposed to be preoccupied with the Sinjao, and that was sort of the case. Jarvan kind of had to deal with the Sinjao at times. Instead, Thresh really came up because they managed to shove in the waves, put the Callista and the uh, Shen. Yeah, Shen over under turret, farming the waves at that point, and then it was very easy for the Thresh to go over to the mid lane, set up a gank, get vision. The Lucian just let the wave push back in. They come back under back into the turret from the blue buff, farm up, rinse and repeat, get a bunch of kills, find themselves ahead. Yeah, the Jarvan was able to make some nice plays here and there, but there was some, again, great roams that came out from draw, trying to uh, equal out, because, like we mentioned, that's in Zhao, sure, was able to get some shutdown gold, but we really didn't see him all that much afterwards. Most of the time, he was just getting invaded, because his <laughs> lanes just had no priority. They kept getting pushed on in, and it was really hard. Uh, you know, the Kasten tried to make some quick plays, tried to go for some 1v1s. It was often a toss-up between him and Aaron, but... Let's go ahead and take a look here at our point totals when it comes to the post-game breakdown and who oh, the damage coming out from the entire squad of GHS. Tons of damage coming in, right? That's then tons of CC from Jarvan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you have the, the Jarvan is like 6.1k, but then you when you consider the amount of CC that they were just providing, you're like, wow. I think all that damage was just Cataclysm damage, to be honest. Right? Just like the AoE smash. The amount of AoE they Jarvan kept getting. Smash. Uh, whereas on the side of RUL, you know, you pick up the Aatrox, he's supposed to be this bruiser's damage, he's supposed to have this impact, and he didn't have it, that really cost them a lot of the game, while they were trying to get the Aatrox to a fighting stand, uh, to a fighting point. Yeah, we see here our, uh, man of the match gonna go on over to the bot lane of GHS instead, so it's gonna go on to Kyle and the Lucian, who had a 15 KDA, 37.5 kill participation, but 762 damage per minute. Some, that's some good numbers. You know, you know, I can I can agree with this to an extent. You know, I'm half right. It's, it's, ha good. it's half. It's half <laughs> yeah, the bot lane. Like, uh, half the bot lane is good. You know, that's that. It's close enough. It's yeah, close it's enough. close. I mean, so looking at the way that Kyle played out that match, it was pretty impressive because as I was talking about the Thresh moving around to Rome, it you know you have to bring attention back to Lucian because Lucian is now one v two in that lane. It's very easy to see players get uh, greedy, get aggressive. They try and go for the fights when they feel strong. Not exactly the case all the time when you go for 2v1, end up dying, and that kind of throws the lead that you're supposed to have. Kyle didn't let that happen, he played it composed, he was a very great damage source coming in from his team, and they were just able to work off him very well, so congratulations to GHS. Yeah, I felt that was kind of a, a little bit of a win condition on the side of GHS, if they were able to get the ball rolling in bot lane, really punish that Callista pickup, because again, the Shen, Callista, it, it only works if you get the early kills. Yeah. So, we'll have to see whether or not... GHS could continue on their win streak here to try and climb their way out of Group A. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break. When we come back, though, it's going to be our second match of the night. MAM Esports taking on ISC Pro Team. Don't go anywhere. C-Tour will be right back.